Hello Internet, it's me Josh, the Aging Gamer. So, did any of you guys see the new trailers for the upcoming Ninja Turtles Beat'em Up? We're getting a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game titled Shredder's Revenge. And it's beautiful. It looks like it's taken a strong inspiration from the turtle games of the late 80s, early 90s. And it's even got great retro-styled animations. But when you're getting a game developed by the same people who made Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game, I wouldn't expect any less. It's also being produced by .emu, who produced Windjammers 2, Wonder Boy, and Streets of Rage 4. Shredder's Revenge has the potential to be a really great high quality product, and I'm super excited for this game to release, whenever the hell that may be. I of course loved the Ninja Turtles when I was a kid. I had the toys, I had the VHSs, and anything else that was Ninja Turtle branded that I could get my little paws on. And after seeing that trailer for Shredder's Revenge, it got me thinking about the old Ninja Turtle games. So I thought, hey, why don't I do a series dedicated to those awesome Ninja Turtle games of the 8-bit and 16-bit era? It just seems like it'd be fun to do. And for today, I'll be looking at the NES port of the arcade title. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Arcade Game. So before I continue, like I said, this game is a port of an arcade title. I'd review the arcade version itself, but I think the NES version just has more to offer. The arcade version was released in 1989, while the NES version came out a year later. Technically, since this is the second Turtles game to release on the system, it gets that awkward name of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. And if you want to check out my thoughts on the first Ninja Turtles game, I already have a review for that. As for this game here, Turtles 2 the Arcade Game, let's go ahead and jump into it. The story here is that April O'Neil and Master Splinter get captured by the evil Shredder. The Turtles are now on a mission to rescue their friends and stop Shredder, Krang, and other crazy villains. There's not much to it, and if the story sounds familiar, it's because it's the plot for every single Ninja Turtles game. Plot-wise, Turtle games kind of fall into that Super Mario Bros. syndrome, where you're basically playing the same story every single time, but who cares, you're having fun! So when we start the game, you get to pick your hero, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael, or Donatello. For the most part, all the turtles play the same. They do the same attacks and they dish out the same amount of damage. Now, after researching the game a bit, people say that there are some differences between the turtles. From my experience though, they feel so close to being the same that I don't really see a difference. I mean, it seems Mikey has a ever so slightly longer reach, while Raphael seems a bit shorter, but all in all, I think you should be able to choose your favorite turtle and be just fine. Some people might hate that all the turtles play the same, but after playing the last game, it's kind of refreshing to just pick a turtle you like and them not be terrible. After you select your character, you start the game. You start off with three lives and you get a total of three continues. However, if you input BA, BA, up, down, BA, left, right, BA, start as quickly as you can at the title screen, you'll get nine lives instead. I do this because I think it gives the game a less stressful, more fun feeling. Anyway, you start off in a burning apartment complex and you must find April and save her. You do a basic attack with B and you can jump with A. While jumping, press B to do a dive kick. Most enemies take about two hits to kill. Press A and B at the same time and you'll do a special jump attack that deals twice as much damage. This move is essential to beating the game. It kills most standard enemies in one hit and becomes super useful against bosses. It can be a bit tricky to do, but master it and you should be alright. So let's go ahead and go through the game. I'm going to go ahead and pick Michelangelo. When I was a kid, he was always my favorite. For some reason, I was always drawn to those comic relief characters when I was younger. So we'll start the level and... Ah! What? Mikey's just staring at me. But his face... Oh god, what happened to his face? He looks like a goddamn Cyclops! And anytime you aren't pressing a button on the controller, they just stare at you with this blank, creepy, expressionless face! Ugh. Back to the action though, we fight some foot ninjas here. We'll see a variety of them throughout the game. Some throw dynamite, some have hammers, some throw boomerangs, and a bunch of nonsense like that. You also have some giant balls you have to dodge. If you're not careful, you'll become roadkill. 
I gotta say, I love the appearance of this level. The fire everywhere. It's cool. It's something that you usually don't see in video games until the end levels. It just makes it feel action-packed right from the start. So, once we get to the end, we find April in her room, where she's being terrorized by some foot ninjas. She looks terrified, or maybe she's just tripping from that bong-looking object over there. Is that a bong? Wait, was that in the arcade version too? Is that a lighter in an ashtray? Hmm, maybe that's just a fancy vase. Hmm. After you defeat the foot soldiers, Rocksteady will appear. Jump around and attack him and watch out for his machine gun. He's not too hard to beat, and once you defeat him, you save April. Or, oh shit, I guess not. Now we enter level two. The, the scene two. Ah! We get some Foot Clan baddies, and we get a few stage hazards. Watch out for the holes in the ground, and use certain objects to attack enemies with. I love this part right here where you just see some babe minding her own business. Smack her with your weapon, and she screams, and you get a kill point. <laughs> oh, and speaking of which, for every enemy you kill, you get a point. After every 200 points, you get an extra life. The end of this level has us fighting against Bebop. His fighting pattern's pretty similar to Rocksteady, so just do what you did before and you can defeat him. Once you do, we'll jump into the sewers. Fight off some more ninjas, and at the end we'll fight Baxter Stockman, in his human form. This fight is pretty easy. He sends out little Mausers to attack you, but just ignore them and keep jump kicking and you'll eventually beat him. Afterwards, Stockman somehow turns into his fly form, and Shredder declares he'll dine on turtle soup. Now this next level is exclusive to this NES port and was not in the arcade version whatsoever. We're on the snowy streets of New York. We'll fight some foot soldiers and some evil robot snowmen. And, okay, what's the deal with this? This is like the third time I've seen the Pizza Hut logo in this game. Actually, back in the day, Ninja Turtles and Pizza Hut were like, best buds. They did a lot of cross promotions. The biggest promotion, though, was the Coming Out of Their Shells tour. There would be events where the turtles would play music. Live. Yeah, they even had VHS and audio cassettes released. That's so creepy. As for the tie-ins with this game, there's Pizza Hut logos sprinkled throughout the game, but also copies of Turtles 2 came with a coupon for a free personal pan pizza. That actually sounds really awesome. Imagine that. You buy a new game, it looks boss, you invite your friend over, you're eating pizza, you're having a good time. At the end of the snowy level, we get to fight with the alien bounty hunter, Tora. Who? Eh, he's just some bad guy that makes no appearance outside of this game at all. He's pretty easy to beat if you just keep jump kicking him. After so many hits, you defeat him and we move on. Now we're in a parking garage. Let's kick some shell, fight some more foot soldiers, avoid getting rear-ended, and at the end of the stage we'll have another fight with Baxter Stockman. Except this time he's in his mutant fly form. He shoots little lasers at you, so get out of the way when they're dropped. Do as much dive kicks as you can to swat this butthole. Now we saved April. Let's get in the turtle van and get out of here. Oh yeah! So instead of staying in the van, hey, let's get out of it and start wandering the streets. Bad guy fights galore. The next section has us on some hoverboards. Woo! We'll fight some more baddies, and we'll fight some missile dropping goons. You'll have a few you have to destroy, and once you beat the level, your turtles get back in the van. Just to immediately jump back out. Oh shit! Well, I guess we're all dead now. Or not, Splinter is kidnapped in a hilarious fashion. Oddly enough, he looks like a turtle stuck upside down. Well, let's go save him. We go through this area, avoiding lasers and fighting robots and Foot Clan members. At the end, we have a boss fight against Granitor. You can use the jump kick technique against this guy, but he'll occasionally punch you out of place. Getting hurt is a small price to pay, though. He takes a lot of hits to beat, but be patient and cautious, and you can win. Splinter is saved, and we continue to a dojo-like area. This level is also exclusive to the NES port. We fight some new enemies here that are a bit stronger than the Foot Clan. There's Venom, the scorpion enemy. 
Blade, the one-eyed jumping ninja, and there's the white tiger enemy, Vincent Von Growl. Yeah, yes, that's his real name, I'm not making it up. At the end, we get a pretty tough boss fight against another alien bounty hunter, Shogun. Carefully attack this fool and eventually his head will start floating around him. He can dish out some pretty good damage. Unfortunately, I don't really have a great strategy to beat him. I just start attacking like a madman until he's dead. Once he's defeated, we find the Techno Drone. Let's enter this last level and stop Shredder. There's a lot of bad guys in this stage. There's lots of Foot Clan members, lasers, machines that will freeze you, elevators with rolling balls, and a second boss fight with Granitor. Once we pass all of that, we get to go one on one with Krang. Surprisingly, this boss fight isn't too hard. Just do the rapid jump technique. He might hit you a few times, but you'll kill him faster than he can kill you. Destroy Krang's robot body and he'll escape. But now Shredder appears. Wait, what? Two Shredders? So he splits into two and both forms are deadly. He can slice at you with the sword, but his most deadly attack is his lightning strikes that turn your character back into a tiny little defenseless turtle. This move is instant death and you'll automatically lose a life. Oh shit. So, what do you do? Well, I just keep moving and dive kicking these assholes. After a while, Shredder's helmet will fly off. This is great because without his helmet, he can't hit you with that instant kill move. Once unmasked, keep attacking the other Shredder until that one's mask also flies off. Now after so many hits, Shredder lets out a cry and is defeated. The Technodrone blows up and we get a rather weak ending with some odd dialogue. But what about the Shredder and Krang? Burn to toast? Vaporize to milkshake? What? And that's the end. So, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 the arcade game. How is it? I'll be honest, I had a lot of fun replaying this. It gave me some good nostalgic feelings. The combat is simple, but the game can still be challenging. There's several ways to attack and you'll be punished if you spam the same move over and over. If you keep jump kicking, you'll eventually get crowded by enemies and they'll beat you down. You can try spamming the AB combo special attack, but again, it leaves you open to attacks. You gotta do the right attacks at the right time. It can get tricky, but it keeps the gameplay from getting too stale. Visually, I think the game is very charming. All the characters look pretty decent. Ah! And actually, I think it's pretty cool that each turtle got their own shade of green. Very minor, but a neat detail nonetheless. The music in this game is pretty rocking too. Maybe not as rockin' as that, but the music is catchy and upbeat. You get to see all the major TMNT characters in this game, and it's overall just fun to play. I think it's a pretty good challenge without the 9 life cheat, but if you do use the cheat, who cares? Enjoy the game how you want. It's great! With that said, I can't do a review without talking about the negatives. The biggest one to me has to be the hit detection on certain enemies. I could fight foot soldiers and most bosses no problem, but flying enemies get pretty tricky to hit. I would either end up just a tad behind the enemy or just a tad in front of the enemy and I would miss my attack. This also happened a lot with those little robots with the electric whips. Sucks too since they can take quite a few hits to destroy. My other issue, and it might just be me, but I don't really understand how damage is distributed in this game. Sometimes it seems like an enemy will just hit me or knock me back and I won't take any damage at all, despite it looking like it. I can get punched without taking any damage, but a deadly hug from behind always hurts me. It's nonsensical. But with these nitpicks, it didn't stop me from having fun. I think the game is pretty damn great and definitely worth checking out. It's one of my favorite beat-em-ups on the NES. It's two-player also, so hey, get a friend, grab a pizza and play some Ninja Turtles. You'll have a good time. But these are just my opinions. What do you think about the game? Do you like the game? Dislike the game? Well, regardless, I hope you follow me in my next video when I take a look at the next game, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.